Hey guys, so I had a bit of a delay with my videos this week. It wasn't an every other day kind of a thing, but I'm still on about three videos this week instead of four. So it was just a little bit of a delay. That is mainly because one of my videos got demonetized and I had to wait for it to get approved. And then I uploaded it while it was still not approved because I was like, I'm, I can't wait. I gotta get this video out to you guys because you've been just DMing me about this story. And I was like, I need to get it out whether I'm getting paid for it or not. And then um, I woke up the next morning and my video was approved. So somewhere during the night it got approved and all was good and well in the end. But that was quite stressful. So I delayed my video because of that. And then I uploaded it anyway. So I should have just not waited. And also I was doing my coursework. I have coursework due tomorrow about noon. And then I have coursework due January. So once I'm done with this coursework, we have weeks of tea that I can spill until I have to do my coursework again. I am almost done with my coursework. I mean, I am kind of enjoying it. I thought I would hate it. I thought I hated the topic, but it's actually okay. Uh, so I just decided to take a little break, do something fun, and then go back to finishing my coursework. <laughs> Yay. It's on land law. And if that doesn't sound boring, I don't know what does. Genuinely some riveting content. Uh, when I read that textbook, I'm like, I don't need the Shane Dawson tea. I don't need any Jaclyn Hill drama or some Gabby Hanna stuff. I just need some land law. I need to do my mortgage purchaser purchasee stuff right now, riveting. So I always do this now at the start of my videos and I still announce it, but here's my Instagram, here's my Twitter. Please follow me there, please do, thank you. Uh, also, I saw that there was like a, 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 a new guideline thing so um, the FTC, first of all, are dealing with brand deals and ads in a more serious note, as in they have already dealt with them. This is like current law. If you are in any way advertising to American audiences, so as a YouTuber, you will see how much um, of your audience is from a certain country. For me, it's about 30% American. So 30% of the audience that I am advertising to, if I happen to do a sponsorship, is going to an American audience, which means this guideline actually affects me even though I'm not in America. And the same goes for Instagram and where in all the social media platforms, including like Snapchat, as if anyone uses that anymore. Please let me know if you still use that because I think I deleted the app. <laughs> and I remember I recently did a story about Emma Chamberlain and I said that in her Twitter sponsorship, she didn't clearly say it was a sponsorship. Like there was no hashtag ad, which you're supposed to have. And some people were like, yeah, but isn't it obvious to everyone that this is a sponsored ad? That doesn't matter. Matter of fact is that wasn't a legal sponsorship. Uh, and I love Emma Chamberlain, I really do. And she probably just didn't know. And that was right before the actual law got passed. So she's probably okay. But just matter of fact is, it doesn't matter how obvious the sponsorship is, if your favorite content creator doesn't say, this video is sponsored by, or um, I got this in PR, or I got this gifted by the company, even if they're not making any money, just the fact that they're getting a free, um, item free product means they have to disclose it they have to say this was given to me in pr this is an ad this is a sponsorship on instagram if you are doing uh, an instagram sponsorship and you put hashtag ad it has to be clearly visible it can't be like i would put hashtag ad here in gray because no one is really going to see that and if you have any form of like vision impairment you're probably least less likely to see that like i need glasses i'm not like completely visually impaired. I, I can obviously see and um, I only need them for reading, but people need their glasses more than me essentially. So if they were to look at my video without their glasses and couldn't see the hashtag ad, then clearly I'm just not doing it right. Things like that. It's just, it should be so obvious and so like there that you can't miss it. YouTube even has this thing where you can click in your settings that this is a paid promotion and it will pop up in the corner, just say this video includes a paid promotion, kind of like what they do on TV where they'll be like, this includes a paid promotion. Anyway, so what James Charles did back in the day with Sugar Bear Hair, where he kind of like hid the ad, but still had it there. Yeah, that can't, that wouldn't pass anymore. That's just not a thing. I know um, someone did a really good video on this that I watched recently. And when I find it, I'll put it in the description below. Uh, and you guys can watch that video because she goes into a lot more detail with kind of what's allowed, what isn't allowed, how we need to do things now, how obvious things need to be. And from now on, like, I don't think content creators should be attacked because some of them genuinely don't know. And YouTube hasn't really, like, you normally if some kind of a law or guideline passes, YouTube pop it up in our creator studio and say, hey, this is the new guideline, kind of like with the new kids stuff that I'm gonna get into. But with this, no one really has said anything. So it's kind of difficult for content creators to find this unless they are looking for it. But the thing is not knowing the law doesn't mean that is an excuse for not following it, essentially. Um, it's like if I said that I didn't know it was a crime and 
someone yeah i'm still gonna be guilty of that regardless of whether i knew that murder was a crime or not don't attack your favorite content creators but just let them know like hey this isn't legal sis please fix it we don't want to see you go jail or pay a huge fine next thing the ftc is actually also the ftc are really busy right now um doing a whole um child friendly content thing because it so happens that there is content on youtube that is clearly aimed at kids without saying that it's aimed at kids so a lot of kids are watching it and um kids are seeing ads and ads work better on kids than children what ads work better on kids than adults so essentially what's happening is these kids are being brainwashed into following these ads and you know saying to their parents hey mom i want this thing and also um when you watch ads and you click on things and you watch different videos um information about you is collected and then it's used to kind of help ads aim at appropriate audiences essentially but you're not allowed to do that to kids you're not supposed to collect information about kids on the internet the only problem is kids shouldn't even be here so i don't know why this is even a big deal kids shouldn't be here and if they are that is not youtube's fault that is their parents fault to create a gmail account you have to be 13 so from the age of 13 you're allowed to be on youtube if you're below the age of 13 go on youtube kids of course there will be like 12 year olds watching my videos and they're like yeah we don't really care about the ads matter of fact is yes like you can create an account that says you're 13 14 15 18 whatever it is but if you if you're like a six-year-old and you're a parent that has a six-year-old it's your responsibility to make sure that you know what your kid is watching on the internet not our fault it's not our responsibility it's not the ftc it's your job as a parent to make sure that your child goes on youtube kids instead of just youtube um I'm just not sure why parents are not, not making sure and then they're ruining it for us because now the FTC is making us um, in our YouTube creator studio thing say whether our video is kid friendly or not and if you say no it's not aimed at kids FTC finds that you're lying they will fine you a load of money and like my I don't think my content is aimed at kids like I talk about you know Gabby Hanna and Jesse Smiles and that definitely wasn't a kid friendly topic I talk about you know people scamming people and and like marketing and whatever it is that I talk about and I don't think it's kid friendly I don't think you know I swear I might censor it out because I'm trying to make money but that doesn't mean I'm automatically aiming my content at kids so essentially what I want to say is them kids i don't i don't want any six-year-olds here this is not the place you should be on the internet um i don't think my content is appropriate for you and if you are below the age of i don't know if you are the age of fetus please go on youtube kids app leave the youtube app alone stop taking money away from us thank you and if you're a parent watching this with your child I don't know, parents should just take more of a responsibility over what their kids are watching, essentially is what I'm saying. But I don't like kids and I want kids to just leave this video because I want to not get fined. Thank you. Next, Zoella hasn't really done anything, but I wanted to talk about her. Recently, I watched a video. I've been watching a lot of videos and getting educated, but I was watching a video and someone said that Zoella is still posting vlogs. And I said, what? I didn't know she was posting vlogs. And apparently her vlogs seem very reminis reminiscent of the good old days, the, the, the prime Zoella time where I was a huge fan, which is when I was about 12. So my curiosity took the best of me and I went and watched three vlogs in a row and they're all like 40 minutes long. But I do watch videos in two times speed because I am weird. So it was only like an hour of content and I kind of enjoyed it. It was a weird, it was a weird feeling. I kind of felt like I was 12 again. I kind of liked it. And it's not like she just started posting now around Christmas time because that is what Zoella is known for, Christmas time. And I would say, you know, if she just posted right now, I'd say she's probably just trying to make money off of the Christmas season. But she's actually been posting semi-consistently for a few months. And it is kind of a reminiscent of the old school Zoella and I don't know I just kind of enjoyed it it was kind of nostalgic it kind of felt a bit like fuzzy and funny and kind of gave me that weird like feeling yeah I don't know where I'm going with this essentially I went and checked out all her stats and she's still not posting on her main channel she hasn't posted there for a while now but when you go on her social blade she's not losing or gaining on either channel so she's just very much just stably stagnantly stagnantly that's a word just going along she gets decent views on her vlogs I mean I'm not saying she's in her prime time like before but she's She's getting okay views, which means she's probably getting okay money because I'm assuming her CPM is good. I'm probably not going to end up being a super fan like I was at the age of 12, but it, it just goes to show that, you know, people can change. She did mess up along the way. I think fame and money took the best of her, but now she seems to be going back to her roots and I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, That is not what I can say for Alfie Day. She, he, he obviously, as her boyfriend, <laughs> pops up in her vlog sometimes and I have to skip. I can't bear that man. Um, he is the worst example of old school YouTube and Zoella seems to be doing really well for herself. I just, I can't. When he pops up in her vlogs, I just have to skip. But that's the tea on that. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with this, but her channel isn't growing, but it's also not losing. So I guess she's doing okay Um, for someone that's been around for so long and has gone through that many scandals. She 
she seems to be doing all right. So Jaclyn Hill is releasing her highlighters, I believe this Tuesday, that is just coming up. And people have been speculating and there is just a lot going on right now. So Kathleen Lights was sent PR from Jaclyn Hill. And if you don't remember, Jaclyn Hill filmed Kathleen Lights saying something inappropriate and bad and then just posted it on her Snapchat story knowing that she said that because um, Jaclyn Hill laughed after she said it. And then I believe it was Kathleen Lights boyfriend or well husband said, oh, don't post that. And she still did. And now she's sending her PR. So not sure about that. Um, and then Kathy Lights does a review and she says, you know, she genuinely enjoys these products. And then she says that the names on the highlighters are different to the names that she linked in the description down below. Description down below? Why is that just a phrase? No, description. Which just made people feel a bit weird about the whole situation. Why are the highlighters different names to what she is claiming they are now? Which means they were created probably a while back. Um, and she had time to kind of change the names since then. Another thing is all the shades have the same batch codes which is the same problem we had with the lipsticks why are all your shades the same batch code so that when things go wrong if if things go wrong you won't even be able to know which shade it is because the batch codes are all the same uh it, it's such a problem to then recall the product it's just an issue and it was an issue last time and it's going to be an issue again and if it isn't then great you got away with it but why are they this why are you making the same mistakes again and again i don't get it another thing is um pr was sent out and apparently there were no ingredients anywhere so you just don't know what you're picking on your face if you're allergic to anything tough luck deal with it i just don't understand another thing people did like a list of um i think it was like 15 highlighters that are cheaper than jacklyn hill highlighters and on that list was dior you know dior the designer brand known for really expensive things um abh let me just see the list abh colourpop cover effects ofra revolution um milani there's just a lot of things that you can get that are is that is cheaper in price and is tried and tested you know the ingredients you know what the brand stands for how it functions what the products are usually like with jack and hill we've had two releases well one so far but two two products being released and one of them was a big fail so so far the track record isn't too great and with like milani and abh and revolution i mean you know what you're getting so i just think you can put your money in places that are better than jack and hill cosmetics another thing is people made fun of like her because um she was wearing a dress for her party and it still had the tag on people are like oh i guess jacqueline hill doesn't have the kind of money that she says she does so she's releasing this product because she's broke or whatever i don't believe that i mean jacqueline hill is on instagram wearing a 400k watch like i don't think she's struggling with money and if she was she would sell it you know she would sell her expensive stuff i just think she forgot to take the tag off but then she posted on instagram and she was like doing this whole like skit where she's like oh my god is that a tag oh i guess i'm broke and it's like that is what you decide to address not the lack of ingredients the same batch codes the difference in names the fact that your products are made in different places in the same release no you don't decide to address that you decide to address people complaining about tags on your clothes this is what i mean it's like when people complain about stupid things jacqueline hill takes that and just runs with it she will come she will address the stupidest things but not the things that actually matter and that is a big problem what is also been found out is that the only she made this like a big selling point that her highlighters are made in milan in italy turns out that only her um palettes the quads are made in milan and the rest are made in america and people are speculating that maybe the rest of the powders were made in that same lab that the lipsticks were made in and it's it's just the baked highlighters that are made in Milan but who knows she was also presenting the American Influencer Awards and she won tutorialist of the year these are the kind of tutorials that she made this year I would not call her tutorialist of the year Marlene Estelle also spoke out and said that she is now in the process of figuring out where where her mica is sourced and she I think said it was ethically sourced because she found out so people are really like trying to figure out if their mica is good or not because I feel like people aren't just aware where sometimes and as a company you should be aware so i don't know why people just don't know where they're sourcing their ingredients from but i'm hoping brands can now prove to us where their mica is sourced and if it's sourced unethically then i don't want anything to do with it there's been some more problems with the shane dawson jeffree star launch but jeffree star has now addressed it on one of his stories i think it was instagram stories but he said that um he explained why the fibers are in the palettes um it's from pressing it in they have like this piece of cloth in between the metal and the pans and I guess that frays a little bit and it gets into the pants. It's actually kind of safe. But obviously it doesn't look great. So if you want, you can get a refund and a, or an exchange, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's not many palettes either. He said it was a very low percentage. So it's not like a huge deal. But then I saw a video. No, then I saw a picture of a girl that found like a piece of um, like rubber in her palette. And it looks like like glove 
piece but then it doesn't i don't know it could just she could have like taken a piece of rubber glove and then dug out a little hole in her palette i don't know how much i trust that because it wasn't a video she didn't like film herself taking that piece of rubber out of the palette like people did with the fibers and it just looks like a hole like she could have just you know uh, and then she would get an extra palette and sell it i don't know how i feel about that um they also posted their seventh part of the series which is actually the finale which means we're not getting nine parts we're getting seven parts i was actually in the intro i was in a lot of the intro and eeyore was in the intro as well we made an appearance and yeah that was fun he addressed the drama at the start it was about 20 minutes of drama of just showing their reactions to the drama but not necessarily um what happened behind the scenes what they think what actually happened it wasn't addressing anything it was just showing their reactions to to the drama that's it that's essentially what i wanted and it's it's what a lot of people wanted um so i'm pretty content but if you wanted like in-depth tea then you're probably kind of disappointed now um i watched spill sesh's video on the beauty bay launch drama um beauty bay has been sending out palettes that are not like packaged properly so they're just coming in broken and her one came in broken so she messaged them off her private account and said hey can i get like an exchange or a refund or something and they only offered her something like 30 percent of the price and they said she could ship it back to them but she lives in canada or america so it would cost her 150 dollars to get it there just no point um and then when she started addressing it on her public account then they wanted to give her a, a full refund and exchange it just looks like they don't care about the little guy they just care about the big influencers who can ruin their image but not the little guy so it just kind of sucks um that beauty base treating people like that and then they're also addressing that unnamed green shade that everyone wanted and instead of selling it as a single they're selling it in the mini controversy palette instead of the diet root beer middle shade they're putting in that unnamed green shade which means now if you want that green shade you have to buy another mini controversy palette or if you're lucky and didn't buy the mini controversy palette you can just buy that one if you want the green shade um i don't know i i wish they had just sold it as a single um instead of putting it in a whole new palette but i guess it's kind of genius in a way because some people want it so bad that they're they're willing to have two of the same palette just for that one shade which kind of genius i just wish they sold it as a single eyeshadow uh next just regarding the Gabby Hanna thing, here's her apology if you want to read it, just pause and read it. She basically just addresses the fact that she never publicly supported Curtis, which she did, and just a lot of other stuff that just doesn't make sense and has been disproven, which is why I just didn't address it before, but here's the apology, I guess. Excuse is what I would call it. And then someone said um, in a tweet, people are acting shocked about Gabby like she didn't film a video about a classmate in her class and portraying her as a addict when she didn't even know the girl and when the parents of the kid got she didn't even delete the video and that's true i remember watching that video she she said all of that then the parents came in and were like we're not okay with any of this and she just didn't delete the video so that's really cool she then also was on a podcast where she said that alex james is a bad person alex james being an ex finer as well and he said that he was not a bad person and that she essentially is manipulative behind the scenes that he wants her to fix herself and he actually gave her like advice in the video where he was like this is what you need to do this is how you fix the situation so i don't know i might just believe alex james over gabby hannah i know shocking information but at this point i'd believe anyone over gabby hannah she also well not she her management actually uh, manually copyright copyright claimed t spills video and ashley cowell's video and then they released it when they made a big deal on twitter which as they should i know that it was her management but i wouldn't be surprised if she said to her manager like can you manually claim all these videos because it wasn't an automated claim it wasn't like the claim that youtube pulls up uh, because youtube can detect when there's been a duplicate of a certain clip um it was a manual claim aka someone went and watched that video and then clicked claim um so i wouldn't be surprised if it was gabby that told her management to go watch videos on her and if there's enough clips to just claim them um but obviously she didn't expect people to how do you not expect a channel as big as tea spill to be like hey you Gabby, you copyright claimed my video falsely. Like, did you just think she was gonna be like, oh, oh well, my video got claimed, damn it, maybe no, better luck next time. She just doesn't think is what the problem is here. She then um, posted a video of her twerking while she's being accused of being like, apologist she then posted a, a, a tweet saying i've had this reminder set on my phone for a couple of years now it reminds me to wake up every morning and say thank you when you start every day with focusing on all the positives all the negative melts away this daily reminder changed my whole ass life give it a try yeah the negative melts away because you're the one causing it so it doesn't affect you like it's easy to say oh ignore the negatives when you're the one causing it for other people it's difficult to ignore it when you're in that situation and it's easy for you to ignore the negatives because you're not causing it for yourself you're causing it for everyone else oh my god gabby just shut the f 
up. If you're not going to apologise, then just don't say anything at all, is my recommendation, because everything you say just makes you sound more and more dumb at this point. Like, not mean or narcissistic or sociopathic, which, yeah, I'd agree that, but dumb. Dumb is the main one. Because an intelligent person wouldn't do that to themselves and their career. She then posted a YouTube video and you think, oh, is she going to apologise? Address the drama? No, she's going to do a My 18,000 Beauty Routine. Not clickbait. And she only hearts the comments that are good so that they go all the way to the top and it hides the negative comments. And then the last piece of tea for today is um, Bretman Rock. Bretman's Bretman Rock's dad actually passed away recently, which I'm obviously very sorry about. Um, and he had a service in the Philippines, I believe. Uh, and fans actually showed up to the service and then demanded to have pictures taken with Bretman while he's crying over his dad. Oh, it just blows my mind there are people out there that are this disrespectful and just inconsiderate of other people's situations and i'm hoping none of the people that watch my videos are this inconsiderate because the people that i've met so far have been nothing but amazing i literally went to a lush store yesterday and there was those two girls there that would that worked there and they were just so wonderful and just showed me around and it was just such a nice experience and it wasn't pushy or, or inconsiderate but i know there are people out there that are like this and in situations like that leave the person alone it is so disgusting to be like oh yeah can i have a picture while you're like mourning the death of someone that you love it's grim and then the person that actually got kicked out of the memorial started tweeting out saying i love bretman so much and for him to deny me pictures like that broke my heart so rude i agree he doesn't treat his fans with kindness at all it's disgusting to want to talk to someone you idolize i wanted a quick pic and even did it in a respectful way you can't ask for a quick pic at someone's memorial service in a respectful way the matter of fact is that whole situation is disrespectful it doesn't matter how you ask for that picture it's still disrespectful regardless i'm not even gonna continue addressing the situation if you guys have any common sense you know how bad this is um yeah just awful and i'm so sorry to bretman rock once again for this whole situation if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every other day but turn on notifications because sometimes there are delays due to um uni work demonetization or just delays slip ups whatever it is follow my socials down in the description down below and i'll see you in my next one bye guys